Guys, today I am going to present the audit on Robson classification of cesarean section. Before going to do the audit, I would like to tell you about the definitions of the audit. What are the prerequisites of audit? What is an audit cycle? What are the factors responsible for failure of the audit? What's an option classification of audit? Then we have to go how to conduct the audit on the option classification. And finally, what are the factors responsible for increased rate of seizure in section and how we reduce the C section rate. Right? So definition of audit is an audit is an quality improvement process that aims to improve the patient care and outcome. This is done by measuring the current practice against the explicit criteria or set standards and then implementation of the changes. So actually this is an quality improvement process. What are its prerequisites? Before doing the audit, we have to select the audit design, making audit team, inform to ethical department for getting the permission to get get an uh, assist on the patient notes for time period of audit and re-audit to assist the improvements. Source of funding of audit involve all stakeholders and proper size of the audit. What is an audit cycle? This comprises of identify the problem or topic, set the criteria and standards, observe practice by data collection what we are doing compare a performance with criteria and standards that are national or from international guidelines implementation of the changes so these are the five steps in the audit cycle what are the factors responsible for failure of the audit why the audit fail when too large or too small size of the audit mean we are doing the audit for many years for two years three years or we are doing the audit for one month two months or 15 days lack of understanding of hospital or community process no involvement of the stakeholders no action taken by the stakeholders to implement the audit and no publishing of audit findings so People don't know what are their recommendations, what are the results of the audit. These are the factors which are responsible for failure of audit. Coming to the Robson classification, in 2015, WHO proposed the use of Robson classification as a global standard for assessing, monitoring, and comparing of season and section rate in the healthcare facilities. The classification is very simple, robust, clinically relevant and prospective. It allows comparison and analysis of seasonal section rate within and across the health facilities nationally and internationally. There are 10 groups in classification and six obstetrical variables that is only information needed to classify, right? So these are the 10 group classification or Robson, WHO Robson classification or 10 group classification system, TGCA system. Coming to what are these 10 groups? Number one, number two, the both are nullipera. See here, nullipera. One, two, these are the nulliparas in both singleton pregnancies, kephalic, more than 37 weeks. The difference only here, there is spontaneous labor, there is induced labor or C-section before labor. Induced labor or C-section before labor, mean elective C-section. So see here, the nulliparous in both 1 and 2, singlet in pregnancy, kephalic, more than 37 weeks, in spontaneous labor. So here, 
all are normal all are normal nothing is abnormal here in the two induced labor this is not normal here induced labor or elective c section that is called c section before labor so this is the nulli pares you have to remember date with n 1 and 2 in nulli pares singleton kephalic more than 37 weeks in spontaneous or induced labor or c section before labor now coming to the 3 and 4 these are the multi pares see here multi pares multi pares singleton kephalic singleton kephalic more than 37 weeks more than 37 weeks in spontaneous labor mean all thing is normal in multi in the four the multi but induced labor or c section before the labor mean elective caesar so this is coming with the multi 3 and 4 multi 1 and 2 nulli Coming to number five, previous C-section, singleton pregnancy, previous C-section, all are normal, single to follic, more than thirty-seven weeks. It means all thing is normal. Previous C-section, only previous C-section. So here I put the C, number five C. So you remember one, two, three, four, five with NMC, NMC. nursing and medical council nmc or national medical center you have to remember 1 2 3 4 5 nmc 1 2 nulli 3 4 multi 5 is for previous c section coming to 6 all nulli pares all nulli pares breach with a pneumonic of mb all multi pares breach with a pneumonic of mb So multi pares breach, including previous one, two, three Caesar, whatever, but multi pares breach, it's called MB. Eight, nine, ten. Remember this mnemonic with MAP. MAP. M for multiple pregnancies. All multiple pregnancies. N for all abnormal la. With previous seizure or without previous seizure, but all abnormal la. Ten is for all preterm. All preterm. So these are the. Ten classification. Here we use the six variables. What are these variables? What are these variables? Number one is the parity. Number two is the presentation. Number one is the parity. Number two is the number of the fetuses. That's single or multiple. Number three is the presentation, cephalic or breech. Number four is the gestational age. That's more than thirty-seven weeks or less than thirty-seven weeks. That's the preterm. Number five is the status of the labor: spontaneous labor, induced labor, or not in labor. Means C-section before labor. Number six is all abnormal lie. This is the. All abnormal lie. So these are all. Sorry, the previous C section. This is the previous C section. So these are the six important variables on the basis of date you have to categorize the C section, the Robson classification. Now coming to date, how will you conduct? Audit on rising rate of C-section by using WHO Robson classification. 
in your unit. So how, how I did that, how I'll do that. I'll do an audit. My topic of audit is rising rate of caesarean section by using WHO option classification 10 group classification system in my unit. Then I'll go to speak with my supervisor and get, a, get an ethical permission from the ethical committee in the hospital. After that, I'll get my audit team ready in which I involve my supervisor, all staff involved in the maternity care, those who would help me in data gathering and data analysis. After that, I'll set my standards. The number second step is the set standard which should be from the guideline of WHO Robson classification on c-section and that would be 100% mean we have to correctly fit the all criteria according to given variables after that I want to do my study I choose to do a retrospective study it will be shorter easier but the drawback is that some information may be missing in file notes of the patient or I have to go to do the prospective study that is a very easy but it's time consuming it will take six months at least so it's a better to go retrospective study but there is some data missing so whatever the study so in the option I will do the prospective I choose to be done in the previous six months this is the time duration because too long or too short will be associated with the failure of the audit. So seizure and section is very common topic. I choose to be done in the previous six months. My sample size include all the women who were delivered by C section in previous six months. After that, what I'll do, I'll design my pro forma for the data collection. The third step is the data collection. How I collect the data, that is design my pro forma for the data collection. And that pro forma would be very easier. It includes the patient registration number, the date of birth, and all six of surgical variables. Number one is the parity, that is nulli pair or multi pair. Number two is the gestational age, before 37 weeks or after 37 weeks, previous C section, onset of the labor, whether it's spontaneous, induced, or not in labor, number of fetuses, that is single or multiple and the presentation in lie, breach or cephalic and abnormal lie. So having my pro forma ready, then I'll go through patient case files to collect that data and then with the help of audit team, I'll enter the data in the Excel sheets or SPSS. And then I'll hand over all these pro forma to the audit team for analyzing the data and once they analyze and come out with the results and categorize the season in section in 10 classes as per Robson classification which will be presented on either the pie charts or tables or graphs. The results will be handed over to me by other team and I'll prepare my results to see that it matches with the standard and the 10 classifications. I'll present my result in the monthly audit meeting in the hospital. I'll keep the patient confidentiality and this non-blaming environment. I'll hard on the issues, soft on the individuals. They will evaluate in the meeting the members who are available in the meeting. I'll involve my supervisor, the team which is helpful and uh, uh, that, is that, uh, that is involved in the taking care of the mother in the maternity wards and I'll also involve the stakeholders of the hospital like medical superintendent or medical director or owner of the hospital or the principal of the hospitals. So all these stakeholders and all the member of the that meetings will listen my results and they will evaluate, critically analyze and come up with the recommendations regarding how to reduce the season and section rate by using the Robson classification system. Once the recommendations made, I'll distribute these recommendations throughout the hospital and do re-audit after a period of six months. 
to evaluate the recommendations of audit were carried out or not and if changes were done or not right so next question what can be done to reduce the rising rate of season in section what are these recommendations recommendations or continuous support during the labor by using the labor care guide labor care guide should be used to monitor the progress of the labor of women in spontaneous labor with an uncomplicated single term pregnancy term electronic fetal monitoring is associated with increased likelihood of c section rate so when c section is contemplated because of an abnormal fetal heart rate pattern or abnormal ctg in these cases first try the conservative measures in left atrial position iv fluids or stop the syntocinon fetal scalp stimulation and taking the decision after the taking whole clinical scenario in account there are risk factors the maternal risk factor and the ctg their whole clinical scenario in account then take the decision for c section consultant or obstetrician should be involved in decision making for c section so senior input counsel the woman for ecv in breech presentation mean external cuplex virtual in breech presentation or in abnormal lie and train the staff in conducting the ecv and breech vaginal delivery that will reduce the class 6 and 7 mean all breech nulli multi and all abnormal lie so that was be 9 class 6 7 and 9 would be reduced the rate of c section of class 6 7 and 9 by ecv and by train the staff to do the breech vaginal delivery women with uncomplicated pregnancy should be offered induction of labor beyond 41 weeks because this reduces the risk of perinatal mortality and the likelihood of c section so to review reeducate the indication of induction of the labor so to reduce the number of emergency cesarean section for failed induction so this is a class 2 and 4 where we use the induction of the labor in the nulli is a class 2 in the multi is a class 4 to raise the awareness about the risk of c section especially the risk of repeated cesarean section among healthcare providers and the patients the mother can suffer from infection heavy blood loss long recovery time and injury to the another organs like bladder bowel although unlikely but maternal death can also occur and such is the case with any major surgery the anesthesia can cause nausea vomiting severe headache the more number of c section the higher risk of organ injury and possibility of the placenta accreta so by by these raising the awareness we have to reduce the class 5 the repeat c section we have to offer the vbic to provide more training to junior doctors conducting their workshop for practice on the mannequins so as to build up their confidence in performing the instrumental deliveries breech deliveries and twin vaginal deliveries to provide more support to junior doctors during labor ward duties junior doctors are welcome to discuss the case with senior consultant before making the decision of c section this is input of the seniors and the decision and welcome the juniors to talk with them standardize the data collection on the c section rate is to make it comparable to the other for example the breakdown the primary c section rate in nulli pares term singleton vertex in these cases we have to give the trial of labor we have to wait for spontaneous labor or give the induction of the labor reason for high cesarean section why the cesarean section rate is high so uh, there are many factors which include the doctor factors maternal factors and the fetal factors coming to the doctor factor so actually this is not the fetal distress this is the doctor distress so it's not doctor distress but i'm taking uh, i'm telling you that what are the doctor factors which are involved in the rising rate of c section this is the reality 
increased practice of defensive medicine which means doctor used to most aggressive care in order to avoid litigations less practice of vaginal breach so to avoid the complications like friction of the clavicle and brachial plexus injury less practice of vaginal twin deliveries is to avoid high risk on the second twins less v big is to avoid severe complications like the scar rupture less forceps and vacuum delivery so as to prevent the perineal trauma no palsy acute trauma and skull fractures increase monitoring of the pregnancy increase number of the induction of labor and increase c section rate for failed inductions so these are doctor factors which take part in the high rate of c section maternal factors more obese mother may have heavier babies so increase the chances of failed vaginal delivery less prefer of the vbic by mother so is to avoid the severe complication like scar rupture more preferably small family size so does not mind to have a c section twice more maternal request for c section is they think c section is convenient and able to choose the time of delivery mean c section on the maternal demand tocophobia fear of the labor so these are the maternal factors fetal factors increase assisted pregnancy ivf pregnancies ecsis higher prevalence of the multiple pregnancy high chances for c section in monochronic twins or first twin non trophic or triplets or monochronic diamniotic twins with complications so these are the fetal factors these are responsible for high rate of c section rate thank you